In this lesson, we're going to continue discussing color. If you'd like to follow along, go under the File menu to Open, and in the Working Files folder, go into Chapter Number 13 and select the InDesign file, Swatches, and just click Open. In the last lesson, I mentioned that it's important to create swatches for all the colors you wish to use in a particular document. Let me show you why. I'm going to select an object. And in the color panel, if you don't have the color panel open, go into your window menu to color, color. And I'm going to go to my CMYK colors under the options menu. And I'm going to mix a color for the object that I have selected. I'm going to click on the cyan slider and drag it all the way up to 100%. And the magenta slider, I'm going to click and drag to, let's say, 50%. So I have my color. But it's not saved. It's just mixed. If I select some other object, that color is no longer available in the panel. So let me reselect my object. And also, if a color is not saved as a swatch, it's not available for many of the color-related options in InDesign. Or if I'm using a color in my document and I want to change it throughout the document to some other color, if it's not saved as a swatch, it's not that easy. So it's important to save colors as swatches which is why Adobe gives you a lot of ways to save swatches. Some of them I've already mentioned. In the color panel, you can go under the options menu to add to swatches. Also in the color panel, I could right click on the spectrum and choose add to swatches. But in the swatches panel itself, I could just go under the options menu to new color swatch and click OK. Let me hit Cancel. I could also click on the new swatch icon at the bottom of the Swatches panel. But there's also a bunch of tricks for adding swatches. I could just click on the Fill icon and drag it into the panel. And when I get an insert point, let go. And I've just added a swatch. Let me undo that. I'm going to hit Command Z or Control z on a PC. I could do the same thing from the color panel. Click on the fill icon and drag it up into the panel and let go. And it added it as a swatch. I could also do the same exact thing from the tools panel. So there's a lot of ways to create swatches. There's even a way to add swatches for colors that you've forgotten to create swatches for as you were working on your document. If I were to go under my Options menu of the Swatches panel, I can go down to Add Unnamed Colors, and it would add all colors that were used in this document as swatches if I forgot to do it. Let's start discussing the different kinds of swatches. The first kind of a swatch is just the regular swatch which we've already created a listing in our panel for that color. I could also create something called a tint swatch. What is that about? Well, if I have a color that I'm using again and again at different tints of the original color, I could just click on the little pop-up next to tint and drag the scrubby slider down to, let's say, 50%. But that's not adding it as a swatch. And every time I want a 50% tint, I would have to go up to this scrubby slider again. But you can save tint swatches. If I go under my Options menu in the Swatches panel, I can go to New Tint Swatch. And everything in the window that opens is grayed out. Everything that has to do with the swatch itself. Because the only thing you can do here is create tints. So if I wanted a 50% tint, all I have to do is hit Add. If I wanted, let's say, a 40%, I could drag down to 40 and hit Add. 
Maybe I also want a 30%. Drag down to 30 and click Add. And when I'm done, I can just click Done. And you can see it added the swatch at 50, 40, and 30%. Another kind of a swatch is a gradient swatch. And the way you create a new gradient swatch is to go under your options menu of the panel and go to New Gradient Swatch. And it's going to open a dialog that allows you to pick the colors for your gradient. I could name my gradient swatch at the top. I can pick from two different types of gradient. There's a linear gradient, which goes straight across, and there's also something called a radial gradient, which goes from the center out. So it's circular. I'm going to choose linear, and by default, I'm getting a white to black gradient. A gradient is a smooth blend of color between two or more gradient stops. To add color, all I have to do is click on one of these pointers underneath the gradient ramp called stops. I could add a CMYK color or even better, select a swatch. So if I wanted my gradient to go from cyan to black, all I have to do is click on the stop and then click on the swatch. I can do the same thing with the other stop as well. Click on the stop and pick the other swatch color. So right now it's going from cyan to yellow. But what if I wanted more than two stops? I can click anywhere under the gradient ramp to create a new stop. And then choose swatches from the stop color pop up and pick some other color. How about purple? And so now I've created a more complex gradient. Now, these little diamond shapes, they are the center of the change between the cyan, in this case, and the purple. If I wanted to skew that change one way or the other, all I have to do is click on that diamond and drag it. And so now it's closer to the purple stop. So it's going to remain cyan longer and more quickly change to purple. If I wanted to move that diamond shape right back in the center between the two, so it is not skewed, I can select the location field and just type 50%. And as soon as I click on one of the other stops, it's going to apply that. And you can see now the diamond shape is right in between the two stops again. Why don't I name this swatch and add it to the panel? I'm going to call it cyan, purple, yellow. And just click OK. Now, I could hit Add and just continue to create more gradients. And when I'm done, just click OK. And you can see there is the gradient, and it's also been added to the panel. We'll learn more about gradients in an upcoming lesson when we discuss the gradient tool as well as the gradient panel. In the next lesson, we're going to continue discussing swatches.